Good morning, everyone. It is my great pleasure to welcome NASA Deputy Administrator Jim Warhard and the crew of the International Space Station. As someone who wanted to be an astronaut as a child, I'm extremely excited to have you join us today. I continue to be in awe of the incredible work that you do, and I know I'm not alone. Everyone at NASDAQ is thrilled that you were able to join us here today virtually as we get set to ring today's opening bell. Now there is a lot to celebrate, and I'd like to begin by congratulating all of you on Launch America, the first flight into orbit of American astronauts on American rockets from American soil since 2011. This past weekend, in partnership with SpaceX, NASA successfully launched Crew Dragon, the first ever commercial crew vehicle, with astronauts Robert Behnken and Douglas Hurley to the International Space Station. It is truly a pivotal moment in the development of the space economy and a new era of private human spaceflight. For nearly 20 years, humans have lived and worked aboard the International Space Station, operating and maintaining the station with resupply and crew rotations needed regularly. NASA's decision to partner with the commercial industry to provide these, these services enables economic growth in low Earth orbit and makes space more accessible than ever before. Congratulations again on this new endeavor. It is certainly an exciting time. NASDAQ is honored to celebrate Launch America with you. We look forward to seeing everything that NASA has in store with your Artemis program and sharing many more inspirational milestones in the months and years ahead. Now, please join me in welcoming Jim Warhard for further remarks. Thank you so much, Adina. Today, you know, we're celebrating a new era in space exploration. And we're really at the dawn of a new space age. You know, we're expanding the economy in low Earth orbit. It, there's a growing demand for research on the International Space Station. And NASA is working on things like mass producing retinal implants, creating live human tissue that can't be constructed in the gravity of Earth, uh, and developing better fiber optics uh, that will make it them better and easier to use. It used to be that NASA developed, built, launched, and operated spacecraft. Uh, and now we want the commercial industry to do just that in low Earth orbit. We really want to be one of many customers in the commercial marketplace. And as we get more customers and suppliers, we're driving down cost and really increasing innovation. That's what we're trying to do. To give you an idea, really, of how important this launch was and is, once we get a full complement of our astronauts up at the International Space Station, we're going to increase research and development by 300%. Ultimately, we really hope to have commercial space stations that this cr crewed transportation system will go to and deliver astronauts. Like you said, it's been nine years since we had a human-rated American spacecraft that was launched from Kennedy Space Center. With the leadership of President Trump and the Vice President, we're going forward to the moon in preparation to go to Mars. And to do so, we've got to start with regular human-rated spacecraft flights from the United States. And we also really need to test out on the International Space Station just how safe it is to be up there for long durations. It, it's, you know, SpaceX is, doing this demonstration. It's really an end-to-end -end flight test to make sure all our systems are working. And that includes the launch, getting to orbit, docking. Now our astronauts are looking at how Crew Dragon and the International Space Station work together. And we'll be looking at the undocking and the re-entry and the splashdown, which will happen off on the in the Atlantic, off of Florida. You, th you think about it, about it, a majority of Americans have never even seen a splashdown of a space capsule. This is really the first reusable capsule and the re first reusable rocket that has transported astronauts. And no co private company has ever done that before. It's really, to me, it's an unprecedented milestone. This is about turning over low Earth orbit to our commercial companies as we prepare to explore the moon and Mars. We've really entered into a transformational era. And with the leadership of the president, we're gonna transform space so it remains in our interest and the interest of all, all free nations. 
We do it not because no one else can. We do it really to advance the human condition of all people. And yes, we, we've got struggles on earth here, but we're going to get through this time in our history. And our hope is that we're going to inspire the next generation to do stunning achievements. It's how we move forward as a species, but also we hope to instill hope for those who need it and again, unite the nation and the world. Now, we're happy to join NASDAQ today for your opening bell. And we're joined with Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley, who just did that amazing launch and then rode that Dragon capsule up to the station. And Chris Cassidy's with us too, and he's the current commander of the International Space Station. So Dina, I think you've got a few questions for the crew and I'm gonna leave it to you right here. Great, thank you very much, Jim. All right, well, I am. I just can't believe I get to interview um, our astronauts today, but uh, Robert and Douglas, you are the first people to fly Crew Dragon. The idea is that spaceships like this will enable people to become private astronauts to make space flight more common. What are your thoughts about making space flight more common and accessible to private citizens and the role that you are playing in that development? Well, it's great to talk to you today. Um, we think that uh, the more people that get to fly to space, the better off we'll be as a species and the better off the individuals will be going forward. It's really transformational when you uh, come into space and you look back at our planet and, and see how fragile it is and how thin the atmosphere is. Uh, it, it really does change you for the better. And I think the more people that we expose to this, uh, the better off we'll be as a species. That is truly inspirational, so thank you. Well, Chris, as the commander of the International Space Station, this is the second time you've lived on the space station. So what makes the space station such a special place for you? Well, uh, on a technical re uh, answer, there's so many things that, that are, are, are a marvel to me that we are able to conduct, keep an atmosphere going, keep the people safe, keep the equipment running and safe and conduct all this amazing research. But more on a, on a philosophical level, I think it's the international cooperation and the partnership that has been forged over these 20 years uh, that r really I find so impressive and, and very analogous to the partnership we now have with the commercial partners uh, as demonstrated uh, just the other day. So uh, quite an impressive place to live and be. Well, that's absolutely wonderful. And what's amazing is that you're, it's like we're talking to you as if you're on earth, but yet you are so far above us. So it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful pleasure and honor to have a chance to speak with you today. I think we're gonna get ready to ring today's opening bell.